Welcome to another episode of Films in Focus, the show where I talk about movies. If you're new, subscribe for weekly episodes or leave a like or whatever. And I guess if you're not new, also leave a like. That'd be cool. Um, and also, if you're not new, thanks. Thanks for coming back. It's fun. All right. Now for today's episode. The Long Goodbye and Why the Poster Matters. In 1973, The Long Goodbye was released at the Terrytone Conference Center, New York. It was not well received. Being panned by critics and losing money at the box office, this film is not what you would call a success. Why? Well, after reading the reviews, I think it's clear. I think this is a classic case of expectations not meeting reality. The audience went into this film expecting a classic noir. The long goodbye is far from traditional. It is not a classic hard-boiled noir, private detective, down these mean streets, a man must go, etc. film. It is a film that satirizes, criticizes, and revels in the noir, hard-boiled genre. It is noir, but it doesn't take itself seriously. It's not a Chandler film. Hell, this isn't even a film about Philip Marlowe. At least not the Philip Marlowe we know. Just a little bit of context, Raymond Chandler was the man who really solidified the hard-boiled genre with his books, um, The Big Sleep uh, is probably the most famous one, and he created the character of Philip Marlowe. And this, this is the Philip Marlowe we know. Here we have Elliot Gould posing as the classic detective, cigarette in his mouth, gun in his hand. Man, I can't wait to see this labyrinthian tale of good and evil with just the right amount of cynicism. Oh, shh, shh, the movie's starting. Okay. All right, interesting. Why is he in his bed? Why, why is he in his suit? Why is he sleeping like that? God, his place looks like a mess. This dude, has he shaved? Okay, that's enough. All right, you get the point. This is, I'm done with the charade. This is not what we are promised with the poster. This right here, this is a loser who could probably find a way to put his socks on backwards and it spends the first 10 minutes of the film feeding his cat. And unfortunately, this too was the poster used in the long goodbyes released. No wonder people were disappointed. But thank God for studio executives. By their almighty power and grace, they granted the long goodbye a re-release. This time with different advertising, much different. Take a look at this. Well, that's more like it. Well, what's that on the top left corner? Why, my God, that's Robert Altman, the director, filming the whole thing. The long goodbye is reliant on its source material for context but it sure as hell doesn't conform to it. In cheeky wink to the audience, Robert Altman appears on his own poster filming the whole thing. A hint that this film wants you to know that this is a movie. The Long Goodbye has more than taken liberties with its source material and reinvented the book for a new era. Robert Altman is no stranger to films that are practically essays. MASH mercilessly rips on the horrors of war by likening a uh, base camp to a summer camp and the player goes all in satirizing Hollywood. Altman wants you to know that this is a movie and think, really think about the story that's told. Let's go back to those first frames. There was a joke on set that in these frames, Philip Marlowe was waking up from a long, long nap, a 50s hero waking up in a 70s world. Altman's asking this question, in today's day and age, how has our private detective changed? How has the story changed? First things first, let's talk about Philip Marlowe. He is not the handsome Philip Marlowe of Raymond Chandler, nor is he the tough Philip Marlowe of Humphrey Bogart. He's laid back, relaxed, he doesn't look like he knows what he's doing, and my god, if Elliot Gould doesn't give an amazing performance. This Philip Marlowe is just along for the ride, man. He's so laid back that he doesn't even have an internal monologue. Those cynical remarks and witty observations that we've grown accustomed to have all but disappeared. I think this is interesting, especially considering one thing. War. Noir and hard-boiled literature has its roots in a post-war environment. These stories are told with a deep cynicism and sadness as they explore the underbelly of society, trying to right wrongs and fight against a great sickness in the world. But in The Long Goodbye, there is no mention of a war, a staple of the genre. There is none of that post-war depression but it's not because there isn't a war going on. That's the Vietnam War. And yet, there's no mention of it in this film. Very uncharacteristic. Until you think about it. 
whereas noir grew from a disgust for evil in a post-war environment. Wars were sickly and atrocious things were done and the US were the good guys. Now it's very different. Now the lines are not so clear. Now maybe we don't even want a war at all as our boys go and die in the jungles of Vietnam. Things are not so clear cut in the 70s as in the 40s or the 50s. Things are confusing now, and as such Philip Marlowe has given up with his internal monologue. He doesn't show the same attitude toward gangsters, the henchmen. He tells, in a bit of comedy, uh, one of the henchmen exactly where he's going. His demeanor is one of just a dude. He doesn't know much more than you, just letting things live and let live with a healthy dose of humor. This Philip Marlowe is not a sequel of the Humphrey Bogart Marlowe in The Big Sleep, but rather a prequel for The Big Lebowski. I think there's just this wonderful scene that embodies his character where he comes up the elevator to his flat and he goes to his neighbor's house with all the topless yogi hippies and he asks them if they'd seen his cat and they didn't respond and so he kind of was just like, all right, and he walks away and he utters this line. They're not even there. It's okay with me. That's Elliot Gould's Philip Marlowe. So it goes without saying that the world is n more confusing now than ever, and Philip Marlowe has changed accordingly. Why is it confusing? Well, for one, mammoth writers are intimidated by tiny little doctors, but also because of how it's shot. In noir, the camera is highly psychological. Characters sh are shown to have power by the angle of the camera. Inserts place importance in certain items, guns, knives. The lighting is harsh, shadows dance upon the walls, crevices lost in darkness, faces half in black. These films are constantly visually telling you exactly what's going on and who to root for. The Long Goodbye doesn't really do that. Instead, the goal on set was, and I'm not even kidding, to move the camera with as little motivation as possible. As a result, it's almost as if we're staying on the edges of the story, peering in through that and circling around this. The harsh shadows of which the genre gets its name, noir, meaning black, are nowhere to be found. In classic Altman style, this film is lit extremely naturalistically. The film stock was also flashed to give the whole film a really foggy feel to it. And I would be remiss not to talk about the locations, which are filmed generously in Altman style. We are greeted by the extensively decorated house of the Wade couple, the traffic light of the yogis, and numerous other locations that we travel through. Robert Altman, in Vilma Zygzman style, is the opposite of noir. The camera is unmotivated, letting us... In essence, unlike the books of Raymond Chandler, and much like Elliot Gould's rendition of Philip Marlowe, this film doesn't know what the hell is going on. Altman has placed our 50s story and crammed it into a 70s shaped box but it doesn't quite fit. But to be clear, this film is not, as opposed to its main character, lighthearted. In fact, what's probably the most famous scene from the film, the chilling coke bottle scene, is also one of the most violent. In it, Marty Augustine Excuse slams a coke girls. bottle into Joanne's face. When I make love to you, make up Marty. Oh, wow. no! Yes, this film does indeed deal with serious subject matter. We have an alcoholic writer who is coerced and bullied by a doctor before drowning himself in the sea. And of course, there's the murder of Terry Lennox's wife, a scene so brutally violent that it isn't even shown on the screen. Our hero might be lighthearted, and his cinematography might be bright and naturalistic, but that hasn't stopped the violence that is a staple of noir. And this brings me to my favorite part of the film, the harmonica. It's introduced in the final minutes before reappearing in the final scene. Both instances, so close together, they can't help but be compared. In one scene, Elliot Gould wakes up, just as he did at the beginning of the film. He's in a hospital. You can hear the screams of people far off in other rooms. A man is wrapped in bandages just across from Gould. He gives him a harmonica. This little scene, in my opinion, is the essence of noir. A damaged man hands a private detective a harmonica to play a little song for the downtrodden, in the midst of a world filled with screams from other rooms. Tell that guy that it don't hurt to die. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the uh, smallest one I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, listen, 
I can't. I got a tin ear. You know, look. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's for me. Mm. Okay, practice. See you later. When talking about his characters, Raymond Chandler said, I know exactly what real private detectives are like. Sleazy little drudges with no more personality than a blackjack and about as much moral stature as a stop and go sign. He went on to talk about his characters, his Philip Marlowe, saying, down these mean streets, a man must go who is not himself a man, who is neither tarnished or afraid. The detective in this kind of story must be such a man. He is a hero. He is everything. In simple terms, the hard-boiled private detective is simply a man who plays a harmonica for those in bandages. In a world of screams, of mean streets, this scene is poetically beautiful in its tribute to the heart of the hard-boiled genre. While Philip Marlowe might be a loser and the cinematography isn't what we're used to, the long goodbye still cares about the noir genre. It still has the violence that the genre fights against. But closely following the hospital sequence, we have another appearance of the harmonica. This time in the final scene, as Elliot Gould dances off into the distance, having righted the wrongs and solved the case. And this time, our harmonica is drowned out by the anthem of Hollywood. <laughs> The whole ending, from the moment he wakes up in the hospital to his dance down the road, feels odd. It feels very rushed and neat, tied up in a bow. Sure, it finishes the story, but it almost feels like an obligation. An obligation to check the boxes to satisfy expectations. I think the long goodbye says something rather simple. Genre isn't what's happening, or who's on screen. It isn't the harsh shadows, the tough P.I., the storybook ending. All that matters is the kernel of the story. And yet, Hollywood and movies have so many expectations as to what that story entails. Sometimes the music that made the original story special is drowned out by the anthem of Hollywood. The story's constant reiterations and guidelines. An ending that satisfies the genre. Philip Marlowe is a man out of time. So maybe we shouldn't tell the same story we did 20 years ago. The world has changed, so maybe it should be photographed differently. Philip Marlowe can be a loser. And cinematography can be naturalistic. But at the center of this story, we have the same violence that noir fights against, the same corruption, the same vices. The Long Goodbye, much like its rendition of Philip Marlowe, is asking us to relax, to allow changes in the stories that have been told, to allow evolution, to not be held prisoner by our ideas of what the movie should be. In the end, it understands the heart of the noir genre, but its experimentation was its downfall as it was met with resistance from the box office and critics alike. They expected this story and got this one. The title of this video was Why the Poster Matters, but honestly, it could be why the poster shouldn't matter. The long goodbye changed the story and was punished for it because the audience forgot. It's not Hollywood that matters. It's not the precedent. It's not the poster. It's the music. Thanks for uh, watching another episode of Films in Focus. Um, I love to do it, and I love this movie. It's so much fun. It's such a good movie. And there's so much more I could say about it, like um, how the security guard keeps imitating different celebrities or the multiple and different renditions of The Long Goodbye, and then also The Long Goodbye, the title itself. It's like, it's almost as if Altman is saying goodbye to these imitations 
um, of what has been done before and wants to create new renditions of the same song or something like that. That's a bit of a stretch, but I just, I really love this film, especially the characters and how Elliot Gould plays um, Philip Marlowe and how relaxed it is. It really reminds me of one of my favorite noirs, um, Out of the Past by Jacques Tourneau and just an incredible performance from um, Robert Mitchum in that film, just like Elliot Gould. And what's cool about comparing those is in both films, uh, the main character, the, the detective or the PI, is very relaxed, but in The Long Goodbye, he's relaxed and he doesn't know what he's doing. And in Out of the Past, he's relaxed because he does know what he's doing. And then it's interesting to compare the different endings. Like in The Long Goodbye, he doesn't know what he's doing, but he still has this happy ending, like tied in a bow and whatever. But in Out of the Past, he does know what he's doing, but it ends very poorly for him. So I just, I love, I love to compare those two. Um, but yeah, The Long Goodbye, just, just great. And you can see Altman's uh, critique of the noir genre throughout the whole thing. And he loves to do these movies that are like essays and they're all very interesting. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like if you want to leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I'd love to talk to you if you're listening. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, all right. Bye.